Hello, folks. This is Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here in Premiere Elements, we're looking at some of the preferences today in the program, some useful preferences to know. And we'll do that in two parts. In the first part, I'm going to look at video preferences. And in the second part, we'll look at some of the audio preferences. Your preferences are found if you're on a Mac in the upper left-hand corner, as they are with all programs. On a PC, you'll find the preferences for Premiere Elements under the Edit menu, Preferences, and we're going to go to the general page. If you're using version 2021 or later, you'll see in the lower part of this page, use GPO accelerated effects. It's a very nice feature. It's assuming your graphics card is supported. It's a very nice feature for uh, speeding up or not necessarily speeding up, but making the timeline perform more efficiently, uh, especially if you're working with mixes of media, you're adding photos, you're adding media from several different sources, the program can better create a preview. It doesn't really affect how fast the program works or your uh, final export and render, but it's very nice for just making the overall performance of the program a little bit better, especially when working with some of these supported effects and transitions. Near the top, you'll find default durations for both your video and your audio. One of them is in frames, the other is in seconds. So your video default duration is 30 frames. I'm on the NTSC standard. 30 frames is one second. If you're on the PAL standard, you may see 25 up here. For some reason, they have it in seconds here when it's talking about the audio default duration. In any event, they're both about one second long and you can change that. Uh, likewise, this is the default duration for any still photos you add to your timeline. They'll automatically come in at five seconds. You can change that to frames if it's easier to work with and you can set this here also. Timeline playback, auto scrolling. Not really an issue on most modern up-to-date computers. If you're having some trouble playing the timeline and the program is having trouble keeping up with uh, the movement of the timeline on your screen, you can set this. I never bother to, it's never an issue. Play your work area after rendering previews. Kind of drives me crazy, I always uncheck it because if it's checked, Whenever you render your timeline preview, the program automatically goes back to the beginning of your movie and starts playing your preview. I don't like it. It's up to you whether you use it or not. But the most important of the preferences here on this panel, in my opinion, is the default scale to frame size preference. Now, when this is checked, any photos or video you add after this setting is set will come in artificially sized to whatever the frame size is for your project. So if you've got a 1920 by 1080 project and you're adding, say, photos or you're adding video that's 1280 by 760, the program will automatically make them all the same size. That's a nice, efficient way to work. I prefer not to work that way, and I'll show you why in just a moment. Let's leave that unchecked. Like I say, it only affects photos and videos you add after the preference is set. I already added this still photo. This photo, if you right click and look at properties, you'll see is 2500 pixels by 1889 pixels. And my video frame is 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to add that picture to my timeline. We'll close project assets. And I'm also going to double click on it so that you can see it in the preview window. This is what the actual photo looks like. And you notice that the photo that we see in this preview window is actually much larger than the video frame, right? So our properties were like 2,500 pixels across and we're putting that in a 1920 wide frame. So we've got, and I can click on it and you may be able to see it. There you can see this is the actual outer edge of my photo, it goes beyond my video frame. So why would I want that? Why wouldn't I want my picture artificially squeezed down to fit in the video frame? Well, because sometimes, or most of the time when I have a photo on my timeline, I like to have pans and zooms over the photo. If you bring in your photo at its actual size, larger than your video frame, you've got some room to pan and zoom, to zoom in and zoom out without losing any resolution. If you use scale to frame size as a preference, your photo will come in and I can do that right here on the timeline, right click and select clip, scale to frame size. The picture will come in already squeezed down to fit inside your video frame and you'll have lost the option to work with panning and zooming without using resolution. So I prefer to work at its actual size and do any scaling here 
on my own. Now, I hope you join me in part two. We'll take a look at some of the audio preferences because some of them can be a little perplexing too. Uh, that's in part two of our preferences for Premiere Elements. I'm Steve Grisetti.